Hello everyone, it's Stephanie Reese with Maureen Bradley Designs and I am here today to share with you how I made these earrings. I call these the I Heart Snowflake Earrings and these, these earrings were made using beads and components from the Softflex Design Kit Rosé All Day. I used, um, they had in this kit uh, some snowflakes, some hearts, some Jesse James beads, and I used their rose gold soft flex wire. And I wanted to show you today how I made these earrings. Put those to the side. Um, this video was requested from Miss Jessie, Jessica, from, I believe, Jess, Jess Jewelry's Treasure. And so I went ahead and made the one we're going to make today just to show you so you have an idea of what we're looking at today. So with this one, I had another pair of snowflakes and I didn't have any more hearts, but I did use a crystal to dangle in front and I used some other um, snowy beads, I'll call them, from, um, I had some leftover beads. And I did add a bead cap. So we're gonna make this earring today. I'm gonna show you and what you're gonna need, you're gonna need some pliers. I have, uh, needle nose pliers, a couple different ones. I have round nose pliers. You're going to need a magical uh, magical ball crimpers um, for two by two crimps. And I have some flush cutters. And then the components you're going to need, you're going to need, of course, some ear wires. You're going to need some three millimeter jump rings, open jump rings. You're going to need some four millimeter open jump rings. I'm using purple amethyst color soft flex beading wire in medium. And you're going to need about 11 beads uh, for the round part here that will be on that are ball crimped that are on ball that are on ball head pins. Excuse me. And then you're going to need the actual beads that go on the top and the bottom, which is a larger rondelle. I added bead caps on this one. And you're going to need a smaller bead on top. You're going to need two two by two crimps. So let's get started. So the first thing I did with the soft flex wire, we'll start there. You're going to need about seven inches. So I'll bring my ruler in so you can see. Actually, I'm going to do seven and a half. Sorry, I did. So we'll just go ahead and measure that out and you'll have a little bit left over, but I have found that this was the best length to work with so that you could um, have enough room to pull the, the wires down and around and have enough room to a little wiggle room rather. <clears throat> so we're going to actually take our small wire wrapped head pin um, crystal and we're going to feed it on first. Hopefully my fingers will cooperate today. And then we're going to take our pretty snowflake and feed it on the wire. And it's going to be on just like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We want to make sure that they are equal length up top because now you're going to feed on one of the crimp tubes. And we want to go all the way down, but we're not going to crimp it. And then you want to make sure that your wires are not twisted, like so. And then we also want to make sure we have enough wiggle room for our snowflake and crystal to dangle. And I'm already getting twisted. There we go. So we're just going to push it down, and as you can see, it moves freely. All right. So the next thing we want to add, we don't want to crimp it, remember. We want to just leave it leave it there. So we're going to go ahead and add our big bead. We're going to put on one of the <clears throat> bead caps, our large rondelle, and then the second bead cap. So it looks like that. And then again, we want to make sure and not get our wires twisted. That's very important. Like that. 
And then the next part comes is you're going to want to have your 11 beads in various sizes or they can all be small beads. They don't have to be the same. <coughs> um, and I didn't want to spend my entire time wire wrapping in front of you because I feel like I'd be wasting your time. So I did leave three and I'm going to show you how I did them. So I fed the bead onto the the ball um, wire and I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to place it at the end and I'm going to bend forward, rotate my round nose pliers up and I'm moving it down just a smidge and then I'm going to bring the wire up and over so that it makes a loop. I'm going to rotate my round nose pliers back up and I'm going to bring that wire back around so that it's in front like so. And then I take my needle nose pliers and I like to hold on to, and this is why you need two, and you can use your fingers or the plier, or another pair of pliers to wrap around. I tend to use on this wire because it's a little more stiff wire. I end up using my pliers to help me out. And then I'm just making sure that that loop, I made my loop, that's a little bit too big. You can make it smaller. And I'm clipping away that extra wire and just tucking the little end in there and making sure my loop is straight. So there's one. Let's try another one. Maybe I can make the loop a little smaller on that one. <clears throat> Here's the next one. Feeding it on to my wire. Again, I'm taking my, bending the wire down. I'm rotating my and I won't go as far down. And I'm rotating the wire over, up, and feeding the wire down. And then I'm holding on to the loop while I wrap the wire around the stem that's above the bead. And then I'm trimming away. And again, I'm tucking in that little piece and straightening my loop so it sits up straight. <clears throat> one last one we'll do is this small bead. Same technique. You're feeding the bead onto the ball wire, the ball head pin, pushing the wire forward coming down just a little bit while you rotate your pliers up and then the wire goes around rotating up again bring the back of the wire to the front we're holding on to the loop and then we're using another pair of pliers to wrap around the stem that's exposed above the bead And then we're clipping away that little bit of wire. We're tucking it in and straightening our loop. Okay. <clears throat> Put all my pliers away. Because now we're going to feed all of those beads onto this wire. The amethyst wire. So I'm just going to make sure that my wires again are not twisted. Okay. And we're going to feed all of those beads in order. And making sure they're all on the wire. And I'm just looking, I like to make the little cut end, I like to make it go downward. So if you're wondering what I'm looking for as I rotate the bead, I'm just adding it onto the wire facing downward. <clears throat> so that the front of the bead doesn't show a bunch of cut ends. I like to see this just the round wrapped portion of the bead. And hopefully I've, okay. Okay. 
and just a few more here. Oops. Get it on both. All right, now we've got all the beads on. We have to add our, that's what it looks like with all the beads on. Now we're going to add our last pretty snowflake bead. And sometimes if the holes are a little bit small, but it, it does fit, <clears throat> you can sort of screw them on and they'll go on. So there's our earring so far we've got all our little dangles threaded on and now we want to add that last crimp <coughs> i'm sorry excuse me so now we've got everything on to the bead and we're still not going to crimp because this is where you're going to make the little heart shape. And you're going to feed those two ends into the bottom below this big rondelle. This is probably the hardest part of this tutorial and you're going to see me struggle <laughs> for a minute. So I'm, you see me inching the beads up, <clears throat> which is fine because I want to loosen it up a little bit so that I have room on my crimp. And the idea here is to get each of these wires onto each side and keep them there. So I'm the first one is usually good. So as you can see, I'm opening it up a little bit and I'm able to feed the wire in just like so. And I'm going to pull it down just a little bit so it, the end sticks out. Trying to keep that piece on this side of the loop. Now I'm going to take this loop and hopefully I won't struggle too bad. I did on the last one, but it's okay. It eventually goes in. These crimp tubes can fit about four wire, <clears throat> four wire ends that is. And what I did is I typically push the end in and then feed it in to the other side. And it's going. Maybe I won't struggle too bad. It's going. And we're just going to wiggle it in. <laughs> wiggle that little end onto that side. Yay! I didn't struggle too bad today. The first three times I did it, I struggled pretty good. And you might just take your pliers and pull a little bit on that little end you're going to end up snipping that end off anyway there we go and that's what you want you want those two ends to come out and of course the one came over to the other side and this is what i was talking about i was trying to get them on each side of the crimp <clears throat> it's okay i'll fix it and your heart is going to fold for a minute that's okay that's not going to hurt anything for it to fold but what I do want is for those two wires to kind of be on opposite sides of each other. And I'm trying to decide, okay, you might have to tug on, so that's that one. So that one has to come over here. If you tug on them just a little bit, you'll be able to get them straightened out, which will then help your heart. And then the next trick is also, and then I have to pull off, out just a little bit on them to make sure they're even and also you want to match them up <clears throat> oh good okay there it is you want to match them up with the first one you made so that they are pretty equal of course they're handmade and they're not going to be 100% perfect but you can just give a little tug on the wires. If you need to, you know, if you pulled them too closely, you can always just pull it a little bit out. All right. And the other 
thing is you want to make sure you're down far enough as well because we did come up a little bit <clears throat> and we don't want to pull the crimp too far down because remember we do want our we want our snowflake and crystal to dangle but we also want it to look even okay I may may have gotten that part correct so I'm just matching them up before I crimp them um, just fine and then I'll pull these beads down a little bit I'll pull that top crimp down and then we're just matching it up to make sure they look the same and they do so we have a little bit more on and they keep wanting to stay on the same side. They're tricky. All right. And I just wanted to make sure I've got the same amount of wire for each heart. See how I'm matching them up. So now you're going to grab your magical crimps. Now that we've got it all in place. <clears throat> and we'll still be able to adjust these wires. So okay it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect what you're aiming for is for the heart and everything to sort of be in line because you're going to crimp this top one first and make sure that the beads are snug as well so we are going to get that little crimp in between the little holes on the crimper plier and make sure that it's in there and as you notice I'm crimping it this way and not face forward because I want my heart to stay flat and I'm going to crimp and as you can see I made it into a little pillow with four notches on each side <clears throat> gosh I'm sorry and after you do that you're going to work your way around and keep crimping the ball and your flat pillow that is until you have a little ball okay so now you've got this the first crimp done with all the little beads in between your beads and we're going to do the same thing on the second crimp there we go and you can make more adjustments to the wires as you need to pulling one down to make sure that they are equal and as you can see they match again it's not going to be a hundred percent but you want to get it close so now we are going to make sure our wires back and I like for the wires to be on each side <laughs> if they'll cooperate like I said this is probably the hardest part is getting those wires to cooperate and be on each side which is where you want them you don't want them twisted here we go did I get it I think I finally did it okay <clears throat> and now we just have to fix heart one more time <laughs> okay again this is where you can make your adjustments because you haven't crimped that bottom bead and making sure that we're pretty close to the shape and then you can crimp everything together and again, we're going to make that pillow shape with all four notches. And then we're going to come around 
and make it into a little ball. We just keep crimping as you turn it and turning that crimp into a ball. And see and now we're just going to clip away those ends so I typically will take <clears throat> and they ended up being as you can see they ended up sort of being on the one side but it still works so I will hold on to one of the ends with a pair of pliers and get my flesh cutters as close to the ball crimp as I can and snip away that piece and you just have to be careful that you don't snip your loop and we'll get the other side the same way grab onto that end and get your crimp your cutter as close to the ball ball crimp as you can and snip that piece away we're almost done there's our earring adjust it how you want it there we go and now we're going to add the jump rings to the top so we're going to take two of the three millimeter jump rings and we're going to open those get the there it is sometimes they're so tiny they're so hard to see we're going to open this one and feed it onto one side of the heart did I open it enough or I'm too close let me grab it with these there we go again and we're going to close the jump ring on that side <clears throat> and then open this one they're so tiny but they look so pretty with the wire. Okay, so we have the two jump rings there. And then we're going to, oops, went down, okay. <laughs> so I usually keep them towards the top because we're gonna take one more jump ring and find the opening on that one. It's such a rainy day today, it's so dark outside, which makes it dark inside. I like it when it's sunny out because then we see a little better. All right, so now I've got my four millimeter jump ring open. Did I open it enough? It makes it easier to see when it's sunny outside. I'm gonna add my three millimeter jump rings Onto here, if it will cooperate, there's one. And there's two. And I'm going to close it. There we go. Maybe getting those edges flush together. There we go. And then, will it let me feed it on? Probably not. We'll just do that way, how about that? And then we're just gonna close that little loop on the earring wire, making sure it's straight. And, the pliers here. We have a lovely pair of I Heart snowflake earrings.
and we're just adjusting them a little bit. <laughs> there we go. And here's the other pair I made. <sighs> All right. There you go. I heart snowflake earrings. Thank you so much, Jess, um, with Jess Jewelry Treasures for requesting this video. I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you later. Thank you. Bye.